Good morning, it's David Schlotthauer with a tropical update on Invest 91L for Thursday morning, June 1st. As always, my thoughts in this video are mine alone and making decisions regarding 91L. Consult the National Hurricane Center and your local officials for the best information for where you are. So here's a look at the latest visible satellite imagery on top of 91L just off the coast of the western panhandle of Florida. This system has evolved quite quickly over the last 24 hours, where yesterday there was only a 10 to 20% chance of tropical development with this system. Now it's at a medium chance for tropical development. And the reason why that is, is when we look at the imagery here, we can see that there is a surface flow trying to form somewhere in here. Now, while it does look very organized, what we don't see very much is there is some northwesterly shear undercutting this cirrus outflow as we can see here on the northwestern side you can even see cirrus um, filaments here moving quite quickly off towards the northeast over southern florida which indicates this is somewhat of a sheared environment and this system will struggle a little bit to get better organized but it might try doing so in the next 24 hours as it is in a somewhat thermodynamic uh, favorable environment but you can see here, there's the mid-level circulation. The low-level circulation or the surface low might be tucked underneath this serious thick canopy of thunderstorms and thick momotis clouds. And so that means these are not quite aligned yet. And that's because, again, the shear that we are uh, looking at. Looking at the visible or looking at the water vapor imagery, clearly illustrating that there is a little bit of low and mid-level shear undercutting the system here out of the northwesterly direction. Now, while it does not look like there's a whole lot of shear here, once this system actually begins to nosedive towards the south, there is going to be shear that will be increasing fairly strong, probably 30 to 40, maybe 50 knots, and that should tear the system apart eventually. Looking at the H-Wharf model here, when we take a look at that forecast, uh, we can see with what the system actually looks like, if I can bring up the right graphic, there we go, uh, we can see uh, that the shear right now, like I said, is not very light. This is not a um, stupendously favorable environment like what we would see with Laura, what we would see with, um, say, uh, Dorian. You know, this is a sheared environment. And when we look at that, we have shear anywhere between, say, about uh, 20 to 30 knots over the system, which is not very conducive, which is not what you want for a system to develop in. You want shear generally under say five or 10 knots uh, for a system like this to develop, but it's doing pretty good despite this shear. And when we go forward on the H-Wharf model, um, this is the zoomed out view. We can see, uh, like I said, that shear is going to be increasing more out of the westerly and northwesterly direction. So by the time this thing moves further south, it's actually going to be moving into a more unfavorable environment. Uh, characterized by drier air and stronger shear, which is not very conducive at all, and a more stable uh, thermodynamic environment. And so if it wants to develop, it's going to probably have to do so here in the next um, 18 to 24 hours. And then once we get past that, it's going to become a lot more unfavorable, very hostile conditions for this system once this approaches the northern Yucatan Peninsula right off of Mexico. When we see the um, H wharf um, water or relative humidity plot, this is at 700 millibars and 300 millibars uh, above the surface. So this is looking at a mid and upper level uh, tropospheric uh, level uh, on the model. And when we go forward here, we can see that the system, there is a nice moist pocket of air around the system, which is why we're not seeing a, a lot of outflow boundaries when these thunderstorms collapse, right? But there is drier air down here. And when we get that shear that increases, this drier air will actually be forced in. And then we can see clearly the decoupling of the convection off towards the uh, east of the cir circulation. Remember, your circulation at the surface is here. The mid-level and high-based moisture convection is actually east of it, which means 
these uh, vortexes are misaligned. They're separating. And with a very fragile, loose circulation like this, it's not going to take a whole lot of shear for decoupling to happen. Now, if this was a strong tropical storm, then this would be a lot more harder for the shear to tear apart or decouple the vortex. But in this case, it really gets whisked away. And this is a very naked swirl, very weak and loose uh, in circulation by Saturday, uh, June the 3rd. So if anyone lives on here on the Yucatan, you might get maybe a pop-up storm or two, but it's going to collapse in this environment quite quickly. So there's really not going to be a whole lot of impacts at all, despite this circulation, because there's going to be a lot of dry air that is just going to be kind of in place. And that it just kind of gets destroyed by the sheer and dry air. Now, looking at the upper level wind plot here, again, this is your westerly wind. Remember the feathery white cirrus that we saw? That's the southwesterly flow that we see which means there is uh, strong shear and westerly flow south of the circulation. And when we go further in time here by Saturday, by June the 3rd, look at this. We got flow here anywhere between, say, uh, 40 to 60 knots. That is not what you want to see for a tropical system. You want to see outflow. You want to see flow that looks kind of like this in all quadrants, right? But not in this system. This is really blowing in one direction. So all the heat, all the latent heat moisture release is going to be whisked away very easily by this flow. And the wind, in fact, gets up to 80 to 90 knots uh, at about 200 millibars, which is about 38, 39,000 feet. So you can really get an idea that this is not a place for this system to strengthen in at all. It's going to be really unfavorable and i'm even uh, surprised that the national hurricane center recon aircraft is going to go out there and investigate this system today so here's a look at the latest national hurricane center there is a 50 percent chance for tropical development with this system as of the eight o'clock in the morning advisory eastern daylight time on this system on 91L, so it's not a high chance, it's not a low chance, it's a medium chance, and I wouldn't be surprised if we do get a tropical depression at the very least out of this system. Some uh, YouTubers are already saying we could get a tropical storm. It's very hard to say in an environment like this because again, we're dealing with increasing shear here, we're dealing with dry air intrusion eventually, and this only has say 18 to 24 hours yet to come before the conditions really just kind of destroy the system, just whisk all the moisture away. So this is on a tightrope. This is on uh, what we call um, a tug of war. This is kind of fighting for its life here. And it's only a matter of time, how quick this thing can get organized. If it gets organized very quickly, then maybe it might resist a little bit more due to the negative factors down the line. But until then, uh, this is really not looking very promising at all for a named storm. Instead, we're probably going to look at a night uh, invest or a tropical depression at the very most. Well, that's going to do with this video, everyone. Thank you for watching.